well, one of my colleagues who I'm very proud of, Dr. Paul Nguyen, you know, presented this morning, you know, the Formula 509 trial. And while I recognize that the entire trial was not quite significant, I think the p-value was 0.06 or thereabouts, um, there is a subgroup of people postoperatively of a PSA of greater than 0.5 who appear to benefit from the addition of apalutamide and abiraterone um, to standard ADT, along with radiation in the post-op setting. So that's interesting. I mean, it's a randomized data, and it's, it's, it's certainly, you know, something that we should pay attention to. The only um, thing I would say is, should we, I don't know if we should be waiting for people to get to 0.5. If they present, because they've got, because they're persistent PSA, they never went below 0.5 to begin with. Or if they got there rapidly, like the first or second PSA check, great. But I don't think we should wait a year or two to let them get there and then treat. That's the only limitation to that that I see, but I think it's important information. Uh, there's going to be a trial this afternoon, um, which is the updated data um, of the CHIP trial, the hypofractionated radiation, 660 gray and 30 um, in 23 gray fractions. It's long-term data. It's suggesting very low rates of long-term toxicity. Uh, one thing I will ask later on um, on the panel is whether or not um, actuarial statistics are available and not just crude estimates of late GU toxicity, because that's important, uh, particularly now that they have 10, 12 years of follow-up. And then the other thing, too, I'd like to know is a little bit, we don't know this at all, second cancer risk. Is second cancer risk the same with three gray per fraction as it is with two gray or 1.8 gray per fraction? Be fascinating to know if there is a difference, increased or decreased or whatever, that's never been studied. Um, I think the other thing being presented today that's interesting is SBRT versus radical prostatectomy. It's quality of life is the endpoints, um, which is wonderful. It sort of recapitulates what we, we know about more urinary and sexual dysfunction with surgery, but it's only got a median follow-up of 50 months, so it's not long enough yet to see late GU toxicity from SBRT. I talked about the prostatic urethra and the bladder neck. We're going to have to see how that unfolds. And of course, second cancer risk is unknown when you give that high a dose per fraction. So those are the things I'm looking forward to, but I think most importantly, I'm looking forward to talking with people, sharing ideas, and, and last thing I'll say is mentoring the young.